Living Life welcomed Steve's dad, Henry, to Guatemala, land of the beautiful Rio Dulce sunsets. We toured the river and Henry was able to ride in Steve's new Lancha Fast Flight. We traveled up scenic tributaries. and checked out the San Felipe Castle. Then Henry was caught up in the more mundane tasks of sailing life. Living Life had spent six weeks at the beauty parlor before being relaunched an activity that took hours. But Henry took it in stride and stayed with us the whole time. He joined us on Living Life for the trip back down river to Catamaran Marina. He also experienced firsthand the excitement of hoping your mast clears a bridge and low hanging power lines. Always a stressful moment on board. There we go. But Dave is a pro now and has it down, aiming for the higher part of the lines at the lower part of the bridge then turning immediately towards the middle and higher part of the bridge. I don't know, there's not a lot of clearance there. There's one more big wire. There's no place like home, right next to Slow Flight. Henry made it in time for the full moon and our dinghy drift. There's something great about floating around, rafted up with friends, sharing snacks and drinking and talking the night away. Even Casa Guatemala showed up. How convenient is that for doing your shopping? It was a lovely night, even though the moon was hidden by clouds most of the time. Somehow, we all ended up hungry though, and met back at the restaurant at Catamaran Island. There, the party continued. I'm scared shitless. Yeah, I'm scared shitless. And I'm not even driving. <laughs> They're trying to get them all on the road for me, and we're all doing video. <laughs> of course, the guys were joking as we drove to Capon, Honduras. 
This type of traffic jam is much less scary than the Los Angeles kind. These pickup bus loads are ridiculous. We saw all kinds of loads. After a few hours, we arrived at our hotel, Casa Rosada, or Pink House. The next morning, we took tuk-tuks or rickshaws to Macaw Mountain. It was a little tight, and the way they drive them is quite an experience. We saw the stars of the show right away. These beautiful birds are wild, but they are used to being around people because they are the result of the Macaw Mountain Breeding Program. Therefore, I don't advise getting your fingers too close to them. They may bite. Henry was quite taken with the macaws. Well, hello. Narakari flew in for a free meal. Many of the birds at Macaw Mountain are rescues from the illegal pet trade and from owners that change their minds or die before their birds. These birds could never be released into the wild and crave human interaction. It allows visitors to get up close and personal with birds they may otherwise never see. In the case of this one, it was hand-reared as a baby and doesn't want to leave. It just wants a little head-scratching action. Does that feel good? Yeah. Yeah. So cute. It flies freely wherever it likes to go. I have never seen a bird like that. <laughs> the macaw did that on purpose. I love when the keel billed toucans appear. For me, they steal the show. The toucans are wild and solely arrive for food. But they're curious birds and don't seem to fear people. Though beak heavy and awkward looking, they are graceful and beautifully colorful birds. Funny how they turn their heads sideways to look for food and can still find it with their beak forward. Copan offers all kinds of delicious food choices, like carnitas nea lola. Not only are the kebabs amazing, but they serve them in style. These talented ladies carry food and drinks up the stairs on their heads. And the free bean dip fondue isn't too shabby either. Nachos add to our well-balanced diet. And there's those kebabs. Don't they look great? Henry had his work cut out for him. The next morning we breakfasted in the hotel courtyard. They served a delicious meal that included a traditional Mayan corn drink. Well. Off again, this time to Copan Ruinas, the ancient Mayan part of the city. 
Historically, macaws roamed freely in the valley and played an important role in the Mayan culture. Thanks to Macaw Mountain's breeding and release program, the birds once again live freely in the park. Now these birds breed in the wild and are making good use of the nesting boxes supplied around the park. The restored structures are beautiful and artfully built. The Mayans who created them were more refined in their artistry than older Mayan cities. This adornment is a macaw. Henry even saw a modern day Mayan family. Seeing the park is hard work with a lot of walking and step climbing. But Henry kept up without complaint as we climbed and climbed and climbed some more. We were rewarded with amazing views, but still had some climbing to do to get to the main event. This plaza offers tunnels underground to see inside and how one temple was built right over a previous one, a common practice at the changing of a king. Here, we rested and soaked up the atmosphere before finally starting our descent. Because what goes up must come back down. It was really interesting to see partially restored and completely unexcavated structures. And a random head. Let's see it. Let's see your best Mayan dance. <laughs> Wait till I show you. I just videoed it. Yep. Yep. There you go. That's a Mayan dance. Let's see. Let me see a Mayan dance. Let's see your best Mayan dance. Awesome. All right, Dad. You gotta show us Mayan dance. Let's see your best Mayan dance. Woohoo! Slide down the banister. Oh, hey, hey now. <laughs> Leaving the park, we saw more macaws. And even some turkeys. One of which thought Henry should feed her. Woodpecker! Through a tunnel opening, we visited the museum with some of the finer artifacts inside for protection. It included a model of how archaeologists believe the Mayan cities looked. The paint really made it pop. I can't imagine an entire colorful city like this. Coming in out of the dark. <laughs> oh, I'm going to teach you another word. Adios. Adios. Uh, I've heard them in cowboy movies. That means goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> 